So yeah, okay. so so now everybody can see you as as a light on the phone, and they can hear you as a voice on the, on the you okay. know, in the cybernated world. All right, You're I coming. like it. I like it. It's like simple but genius. Well, Norm Macdonald came up with this with this actual concept of using the phone and the speakerphone, and he calls his uh-huh. celebrity friends, you know, like. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell, or no, not Rosie O'Donnell, but uh, <laughs> Roseanne, Roseanne Barr. Roseanne, she was great, and uh, Chevy Chase and stuff. And, and he calls his normal friends. Do, no, I say normal, but just people that he doesn't, you know, that aren't. His famous. poor, you mean his his poor friends too? <laughs> I don't know if he has any of those. But I don't know Norm Macdonald at all, but he's funny though. He has this, he has this line about. Uh, have you heard about Impossible Bat? It tastes just like bat, but there's no bat in it. You know, it's like it's really safe to eat. And, Oh, Impossible God. bat. I, just, I haven't seen. I remember he was hilarious in Saturday Night Live, but I haven't seen like. I'll have to look that up. I haven't really dug. I haven't yeah, seen well, he did a. He did a. Uh, he did like his last show. You know, before this epidemic came out, he. Uh, it was like we're right on the cusp of. You know, they were going to close everything down. And he was like, they said, well, he says, well, they told me not to bring up the virus, but it, all he did was talk about it. And I have it on my comedy page, <laughs> a comedy corner, you know. Uh, it's like, I just sent it to Brian Burgess, a friend of mine. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's so funny. I mean, he just, all he does for half an hour is talk about the virus and how he's uncomfortable being there. And he it's so, it's so, isn't it great that we all know how we're going to die? It's just a matter of the order now, you know. <laughs> it's just shit like that, you know, off the top of his head, you know. And it's just so real. It's just hilarious true he just he's unfiltered that guy so anyway lauren so uh how are you doing i mean you okay so how many years has it been since you left la well i left los angeles in um july of 2018 so i guess it's been it's been almost two years wow it's been a year a year and three quarters i think wow wow yeah 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 it's 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 weird you know i I was telling another friend, so I have a, a girlfriend who, like, went on this whale watching trip down in Mexico right before the full pandemic started, and she's still in this little village wondering if she should come back to the States. Wow. And she's, like, she's the kind of person, too, and, and I was like, you know, even though, like, they can't see people, um, I still have this longing for, like, during this whole, like, lockdown, it's, like, I want to be in Los Angeles. Like, I want to be... I feel like that... <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like well, wait, you're... Place, now, you're, you know, you're... You're living... Is it Washington State, or...? Yeah, so I'm in Washington. I'm a, I, I'm in a beautiful place. I mean, I I left L.A. for very... For very real reasons for me. Things like, just, there's just too many people. I felt too old. I was just too tired to live in Yeah, Los yeah, no, I understand. Especially since I quit drinking, you know? It was like, oh, my God. Like, I just felt old all of a sudden. Yes. You know? right. So, it's, I live on Whitby Island, so it's like 30 minutes. You're on an island? Of, yeah, yeah. If you, That's what if, I thought, but I was, what's the name of the island? It's called Whitby. What? Whitby, w- oh. wait, W-H-I-D-B-E-Y. So, if you're in Seattle, you drive north for like half an hour. I thought you said Wimpy, and I was going to be like, it's Hamburger Island. Okay. <laughs> Could you imagine Wendy's Island with frosties <laughs> and cheeseburgers? Oh yeah, God, that's yeah. Amazing. With yeah, the island. We're like, we're like the first island in a series of islands um, pretty much to Vancouver. Like, if there's like Orcas Island, there's, um, I don't, I actually don't know that many islands. It's the San Juan Island. And then wow. on the other side of me, like I have the mainland on one side, and uh-huh. then on the other side I have the Olympic Peninsula, which is, like beautiful. Wow. So, I'm in a really amazing place. That's great. Well, I've seen some pictures and it seems like there's a community there for musicians. I mean, there were, at least there was before yeah, before this uh, pandemic or whatever they're calling it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it seemed like there was a cool community there. There is. It's a really, really cool community. Um, there's a lot of music. There's a lot of, it's an agricultural island. So there's a lot of farming, which means there's a lot of Food, yeah, uh, local food. It's, a lot of country songs. Well, yeah, it's, like, it's really like I don't know. It's, it's a great model for just like local. I guess if you're on an island and you're, and there's a lot of farmers, you can do sort of like reggae country. I don't know what that would be like. But... <laughs> yeah, 
You I, could. Come, come up with yeah, something like, yeah, that would be interesting. I'm on an island, so it's like not Paul Street. That part was a little weird for my brain to like, right. figure out. It's, it's an island, but it's like snowfish. I don't have mountains outside. Like, like out my window, uh, I I looked out over a bay called Useless Bay. And wow. then on the other side of the bay is the Olympic Mountains, which are like snow packed. Wow. And, um, yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's I like being near water. Yeah. Water's nice to be near. I mean, that's one of the reasons. That's one of the things I like about California. You know, I missed it in Arizona. You know, I was in the desert. You know, yeah. I miss being near an ocean or a bay or, yeah. Yeah, it's so claustrophobic if, if I can't see the edge. Like when I was living in Colorado, like it was, I just felt so in the middle, and then there were mountains <laughs> all around, and it just felt really like weird. Like I need to be at the edge. I mean, there should be an open wall. Yeah, know? yeah. Well, the ocean is so, it's so. Uh, it gives you perspective. I mean, it, it's it's humbling to say the least. It is. It's it, like in so many ways. Um, nurturing. Yeah, you know, it's just like you know, you realize how, and there's a whole world that lives underwater. And okay. and they don't know they're not even they don't you know they're not even aware that we exist, which is why I mean that's like a good metaphor for dimensional theory, you know, because I believe in other dimensions, and I mean it, the same way a, a fish you know doesn't you know you could say there's no other dimensions, but a fish would say well there's nobody on land, nobody lives on land, right? A fish would yeah, know. Think, See, a fish would know. and they would assume that there's no way that. Because we can't live on land, that no one can live on land, and so, you know, that their whole reality is underwater, and our reality is, you know, you know, we can we can go underwater, and we, you know, we yeah, have. Yeah, it's definitely like the reason the bay I live on is called Useless Bay is because it's very shallow, and so when the tide is low, which it is right now, you can walk out like, like pretty far into the bay. Like it's. If you didn't know it was that shallow, it would be like really trippy. But you can walk out into the bay, and um, it's interesting because you realize all that used to be underwater. And some of it was underwater like a few feet, and some just a few inches. But when yeah. the tide drains and the tide gets low, and you start walking out on the flats, it's like there's a totally different ecosystem. Right. And it, and, and there's like a relationship, and it's just so dynamic. Uh, the way that it comes and goes. And well, in Jamaica, when I was, I only went there once, you know, to a, to a friend's wedding, but uh, uh, but I went in the water, and you can walk way out there. Not only is it clear, you can see the sand through the water, <laughs> yeah. but it's warm. But you can walk way out. I mean, it's just like it's it's shallow all the way. I mean, it's just bizarre. You know, it's like, you yep. know, it's, it's a, a whole different experience. I I've lived in LA like half my life. Off yeah. and so and then I live the other half in Colorado so this is in one way it's like the best of both worlds there's the beach and there's mountains wow it's just a different beach culture you know there's like no surfing and it's, it's not sandy beaches it's like semi-sandy and um I don't know well it's, what kind of beach doesn't have sand I mean what I mean, Pebble well, Beach well it's like more like pebbly and rocky okay Pebble Beach yeah I guess you, I've heard of that yeah I suppose, I mean, this is pretty sandy, but it's not, like, all the way on the coastline. It's not always sandy. Right. Um, and there's a ton of driftwood. Like, what they need to do is they need to pave the beaches, you know, so that way we can drive on them. You know, it's like, there's a lot of places we haven't been able to drive to. I mean, I was thinking pave the Pacific at one point, but then, you know, that way we can have, like, an access, access to other continents. But, you know, we just haven't paved enough for the planet. That's what I'm thinking, you know. It's like, we... We we've kind of yeah. gone we've kind of gone half assed on this pavement thing, you know. I mean, well, at this point it wouldn't shock me if if someone came along and was like, "We're paving this beach today." I'd be like, "All right, cool, man." Well, with the global warming and all that, other stuff, you know, the carbon, you know, the monoxide that comes out of the cars, you know, I was thinking maybe we should just go back to horses and airports. You know, that way you can <laughs> you can take the horse, you know, hitch it up at the you know at the old at the old uh, you know Burbank, you know John Wayne Airport or whatever. And you'd right. have hitches there, you know, and then they could sables at the airport so they could take care of the horses. And then you could go far and fast, or you could go local and slow. But, you know, we paved over everything, so that's, like, out of the question. They say driving is a privilege and not a right, but I think they've come up with that idea before they paved <laughs> over the whole planet, you know. It's like, you don't give us money, opp other opportunities, you know. When you have a choice between a, you know, a stagecoach and a, a train and a, 
and a car, that's great, but they don't give you that, those choices, you know, you just, <laughs> there's no stagecoach, and trains are far and no. few in between, and so you pretty much have to go with car, but I think when they start getting those driverless cars, you know, they're talking about that, that'll, that'll take care of a lot of problems, you know, because no one will own a car, you just have these driverless cars that will come pick you up and take you where you're going, there will be no more, you know, no more insurance companies, no more traffic jams, no more meter maids, no more highway patrol, no more DMV. You know, you get rid of all that stuff around that surrounds the, you know, the clutter of driving. You know, the. I mean, I, I don't know what it's yeah, almost. Yeah, and all those like peripheral stuff. It's, it's pretty trippy to me. Like, um, even the Tesla has, you know, you can you can just start that shutter app from your phone and. Right. Drive it, drive it over to you. Yeah, I mean service, those. You know, like that's really that is really frightening for me. I live like a really super analog life, and so like to to see that. Very yeah, I don't think we're ready for that. I mean, I think this should be like, I mean, when we're ready to, to go all automated, you know, cars, where cars are just, you know, there's a hub and, the, you know, there's like a central computer for them all. And I think, you know, there will be no more DUIs. I mean, there's so many pluses, you know, positive things that will come of that if it works, if they can get it to work, you know. I mean, I'm kind of like trying to get into it, but I'm also, I wouldn't be bummed out if we all just went back to walking. You know, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, no, I mean, eventually it's going to probably come down to that, eventually, because, I mean, I don't know how, unless we can figure out a way to sustain our our progress, you know, it's like we haven't, we, 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 we have, there are ways of doing it, solar, there's like a lot, but everybody says it's too expensive, it's too expensive, well, you know, that's because you can't see beyond, you know, progress has to, like, overtake our belief in money, you know, it has to, and personal wealth, you know, it's, like, our biggest problem, because we're all competing well, for really it. I don't think solar is that expensive, I think it's just, it's, it's being bullied by... Well, that's the excuse, like yeah, I mean, the excuse is too expensive to, to do it, I mean, a, a lot of that, a lot of those things, you know, are probably coming up from the auto companies themselves, and from the power companies, and the oil industry, and all that, that want us to believe that solar and you know sustainable energy is not a, you know a viable thing because there's not enough profit in it <laughs> but uh I mean, I mean that actually speaks volumes for kind of the like the mantra of, of whatever this world that we're living in and is that like sunlight is this resource that is just all giving and to tap into that is pretty simple and to design systems around it and we haven't shifted over to that yet, and we have. I mean, well, the you know, it's going to last a couple hundred billion more years. You know, it's like, a, why can't we just? <laughs> well, I mean, are there are people that have learned to like, profit from it. Tanning, article? you know, we're you, going to the moon. We're mining the moon now. Right. Like, yeah. why, when are we going to go to solar? Like, we're in a pandemic, and we're mining the moon. And, and I know. And the thing is, people have capitalized on I me, mean, like, you know, suntan lotions and stuff. People are, like, on the negative effects of the sun. People are always, answer, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, people are always, like, capitalizing off this and that. But, yeah, no, what we really do need to do is just, like, use the sun as, like, a main power source and wind. You know, I mean, I know wind is good. The tides, the tides are pretty consistent. Water is great. Water is yeah. great. Oceans, are, there's all, anything that's move that are that naturally moves. You can harness that and create power. I mean, it's just and, you know, and heat. Anything that's never, all this stuff is just it's just waiting for us. You know, people were. I don't know. Growing up, I've heard about fusion a lot. You know, because you know fusion's supposed to be a good power source too. But of course, you always have the. Uh, I don't know. Whenever you're using nuclear kind of things, it's, it gets kind of dicey. I think. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely risk. Yeah. Fusion is like is you you fuse atoms together and you know instead of breaking them apart, you know. I mean, it's a totally right. different. But uh, I don't know. I don't know a lot about. I don't know that much about all that stuff. So. I just. Uh, but I would like to see a change. You know. You can hear me, Lauren. I don't hear, I'm not hearing anything. You're not hearing anything? Oh, there you are. Now you're back. Okay, yeah. My, this is why I don't do live feeds, because my connection's just bad, you know, and, and Spectrum is, like, clogged up right now, so if we cut in and out, I'm really sorry, but it's, like, it's on my phone, it's on my computer, it's everywhere. Aww. Well, you don't offer me. I, I'm okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> all for those people with the virus. All for those damn hospital workers who don't have any protection. All for the, there's so many people to all for right now. <laughs> I know it's a really. Crazy. It's awful how many people we have to all really for. It is awful. It's it's very. Um, yeah, I mean, talk about wanting to escape. It's really tricky right now to like stay present and figure out how to like be of service and stay afloat. Right, right. Um, it's yeah, it's really. Well, you think you think there's always something that you could be doing that's maybe a little more giving or a little more, you know, but and there probably is, there probably are things, but the biggest thing you can do probably for everybody is just to isolate yourself, don't get the virus, you know, stay as safe as you possibly can, be alone. Yeah. You know, it's the best thing you could probably do. And, you know, all this stuff about, you know, well, working, 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 you know. I mean, I've been, a, you know, I have not been a big fan of work, okay. I mean, I work jobs. I've had many jobs, you know. I know people, well, their self-esteem gets tied up into it and all that. But work doesn't always work, you know, not for everybody. And, uh, you know, if we would spend less time, you know, inaction is actually a, going to do a lot better for the planet. I mean, the environment's already clearing up, you know. All this inaction from everybody yeah. isolating is really good for the ecosystem. It's good for the for the air that we're breathing. It's good for... It's really good. It's cleaning up the planet, just not doing stuff. And I've been saying that for years. You know, if people just stop working, you know, we... Yeah, we needed to work when toil and soil and all that stuff in the Bible, you know, you know, I, you know, Adam had to go off and work the rest of his life. I, I get it, right? But, you know, we've invented all this stuff in the last 120 years, 200 years or whatever, to, like, we don't have to work nearly as hard or as much and not only as many of us have to work because everything's automated and it's not a bad thing people are going well it's automation taking our jobs well good that's why we that's why we invented it okay so we wouldn't have to do as much shit and we could like the less we work the better it is for the environment you know the less you go places the less carbon monoxide is going out into the world the less you consume you know the less well, garbage and i feel like my last like my last couple jobs you know work jobs it was like I felt like I, did, I wasn't even doing anything. I felt like it was just like meetings and moving paperwork around the desk <laughs> and like so much stuff that wasn't geared towards. Well, it's like, politics, so I, because they have to they have to keep you thinking that. I remember working at J.C. Penney's when I was a kid, you know, and they were like, you know, at least appear to be busy. That's what you got to do. Appear to be busy. Exactly. Exactly. That's what, that's perfect. It's like you appear to be busy, and I just got to the point where like. I mean, I mean, one of my last jobs, it was so bad. This was like over 10, 12 years ago. I I got to the point where I realized like it was like office space. Like nobody was my boss. Nobody knew even what I did. I would go in in the morning <laughs> and I would like put my coat on my chair and I would turn on my computer and then I would leave and I would turn around and I would go back home. <laughs> and then I would go back at like five or whatever <laughs> and I would say hi to like a few people, you know, so people saw and nobody cared. <laughs> you know, it was just like, wow, this is... This is like well, that's, that's, not how I want to be investing my time. Like, I know, but that's kind of what so we do. Time. That's kind of what all work is now. A lot of work is just bureaucratic, you know, it getting is, to, right. it's just more of it's about getting to the job and then appearing that you're working and then going home, you know? It has nothing to do with anything. And I think you're right. Like, inaction is, it's been... The best it, action like, we could possibly home. take as a species right now. Well, I think the best thing that, like, we can do is just, like, fucking stay home and so I'm like I do that but that's yeah. like I'm I'm super okay with inaction and then getting over just the like the trust which I, I feel like I, I'm, I'm a big believer in manifestation so it's like I just feel You're like what? I stay in a certain frequency that everything's gonna be okay and then I realized that like without without the alcohol and the cigarettes which I feel would be taking up a significant amount of my time right now I'm able to dive deeper into, like, Cubase and just, like, really focus on, you know, learning how to take the sound that's in my head and put it out into the world, you know, without a middleman. It's, like, that's a big thing for me, and that that is fine. Like, that's all I'm doing right now, and I'm pretty okay with that, and it feels like a very, um, very valuable way to spend 
these days. You know, I could spend these days stressing, and I could spend spend these days just like agonizing over. What's no, it's cool. On. You're you're like. You're... I can spend my days like being aware and being conscious. You know, I'm teaching yoga every morning on that live stream. And right, like right. Holding space for people, and I'm. I have a lot of people. I wouldn't say like on fees, but it's like there's a lot of people who I know who battle with drug addiction and alcohol addiction and they're right, moving right. in and out or they just need someone to talk to or you know it's like I'm there for those people because this is like a really crazy time and beyond that like those are the actions that I, I think I mean I'm getting creaky but it's like that I think we should be engaging with one another and, yeah and I feel like we shouldn't be just trying to make ourselves look, look busy you know it's like let's Let's be real with each other. Let's let's right. go back to being human. But then there's this weird thing where like we can't get within six feet of each other. So it's like <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> right? Like it's just such a crazy time. And but I feel you know I feel lucky that I have my dog. And ooh, it's like really windy here right now. By the way, there's like so much furniture just like being blown around on the deck. <laughs> me. But um, you know that I can go outside and it's sunny. Here, like I just took a walk with my dog, and I clear yeah. my head, and because it's just it's a lot of like overwhelming stuff. It's just. Yeah, no, there's a, it, well, you know, in, in a way, it's like a side effect of this whole thing uh, has been, you know, people, first off, you know, it's like we're not in solitary confinement, we're isolating, but we have better communication networks than we ever had, you know, social media and these podcasts yeah. and everything else, so we are interconnected more than ever, and uh, people say, oh yeah, you know, back in the day, people interacted more, <laughs> it's bullshit, they didn't, you know, it's like, I remember taking the bus as a kid, you know, before cell phones and everything. Thing, you know, and we're more interconnected now. We know what's going on with each other more now than we ever did. Twenty four seven, we're on call and we have access to it. Twenty four seven. That that was that's a that's a revolutionary rea- part of our reality. Okay, that yeah. totally revolutionized our reality because it never. That's not what it was like. You know, I get on the bus and the only difference is if I had a guitar, you know, and I get on the bus. Sometimes people would like ask me to break it out, you know, and play a song for them on the bus. That never happens today because people go, they, they, they go, oh, I got an app for that. You know, they look at my guitar and they're like, you know, I got an app for that. I don't need that. I got all the music in the world here on my phone. And the other thing that's changed is that people used to call me a lot, you know, but for reasons, for ver- you know, reasons like, you know, they wanted to know the lyric to a song or they wanted to know the capital of a state or, you know, just, you know, questions, just everyday questions that would come oh, up. and yeah. Nobody needs anybody for that anymore. So we, so in that sense, we have broken we we aren't communicating as much anymore but we have access and we know more about what's going on with each other than ever before so it's it's a different thing you know it's like that we don't need each other as much because we don't need to we don't need to lean each other for on each other for information anymore and that's like the whole thing about this is why i think politicians are like so behind the times and like they don't have any like regular perspective at all because you know they're, they're going to make college tuition free. Well, that's great, but what do you need to go to college for, really, when you have all the information in your phone? You know, I mean, we, you know, college should maybe turn into discussion groups. You know, about all the information that we have carrying around because we have everything that's ever, all the knowledge of the world, more so than you know, even the the non knowledge of the world. Unfortunately, you know, like the flat earthers and stuff. You know, it can all be found on your phone. You can find a justification for anything on your phone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so all the information is there. So, you know, it's like, I mean, you do have to understand, you know, there are subjects, you know, like string theory and calculus that you're going to need some help with and stuff. But, I mean, really, you know, we don't need, school should be really totally rethought. I mean, I think education should be rethought. It's got to be revolutionized because this is a revolution and we're not, like, even making it apparent that that's, the, that's how drastic it is, you know. A dra- and we... We should be like acknowledging the fact that things have totally changed in the last twenty years. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. I think it. Yeah, I mean, from a behavioral standpoint, because we do look at our phones more than we look at each other. Um, something that trips me out is seeing kids like grow up, not in like a bad way, but just like understanding what life must be like, how different it must be for someone who was born into cell phones and was playing with, like, a touch screen, you know, when they're, right, right. When they're two years old and, and they're already so dialed in that, you know, it, it starts to make me 
think about like they're just emerging like the crazy emerging of people and and machinery you know the emergence of like AI and how it could be that's, that, I feel like if, if that's what we're doing yeah if artificial that's intelligence that's is like the next step yeah sure well, that's the way that, like, our brains are going to evolve if, we're, if our brain cells are, like, wrapped around, first of all, like, the radiation, and second of all, this, this like, screen and the speed at which information travels and, like, right. the way that everything is at our fingertips, I mean, it is in my phone right now, like, I just got a newer iPhone, and it, it just trips me out. It's like, I have Spotify. I, I, have, I have a video camera. I have a camera. Yeah. I have a bank. Right. Now everything's everything's at your fingertips right here, and it's great. I mean, it's, it's, I have it's, a movie. They have Netflix. I wow. Have, I can see what time it is. Oh, and I can call people. You now, yeah. like, I cannot believe how much stuff is in this phone. But like, there's, there's like other generations where like they this, this it's not even something that they think about, and. Uh, well, when I was growing, I mean, when I was in high school, we didn't have, there were no cell phones or anything like that, you know, it's like, I mean, we had, you know, you'd go days, you know, without, you know, somebody would call you and you'd go days without even responding because it'd be on a message machine and, you know, yeah. you might check it at the end of the night and, you know, and it was totally normal, you know, I mean, people didn't have access totally. to you all the time, you know, it's like if somebody texts me now and I don't get back to them in 24 hours, depending on who it is, they'll call 911, you know, I mean, it's like, it's, that, none of that happened, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's cr- is a crazy, so there's two crazy things that like, the, <laughs> the way that people expect that we should get back to them so quickly, and then the other thing is, is this like wild assumption that's been adopted by everyone, that we have to fucking defend every goddamn opinion that we put out there, and <laughs> show all sorts of evidence, it's like, if you don't agree with something I say, you do your own research, you come up with your, and then you can ask me about it, or post your own opinion, but it's just because I say something, or I express something, it doesn't mean that it's like open for debate or that I right. It's, it's a strong, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a strong thing that you, it's a strong realization, and it's a strong, uh, you know, testimony that you have, you know, for yourself, you know, to say that, to be able to say it, because I was never able to say, I, you know, I uh, enjoyed sobriety better than I did. I enjoyed not being in trouble, you know, not going to jail every six months or every year or whatever for drunk driving. Well, that was the place that I was at. It was like I, I was like flirting with enough insanity. That right, I right. Like, okay. No, I know some of the people you were hanging out with. Yeah, you were definitely flirting with insane insanity. <laughs> you were closer like, to it than I was. I mean, and I. And I, I might be a, you know, I might, I wouldn't even party with some of those people. <laughs> yeah, I was, um, and I was having fun, and then it was just like, look, do I, if I, if I wake up every day and I make this choice, this is, this is the choice, this is like the muscle that I'm, like, using every day, and that's the one that's going to get stronger, and it just dawned on me, like, in August of that year, I quit in December, but in August was when I tried to quit, right. and, um. And then when I tried to quit and I couldn't, for, I would go like five days and then, you know, I'd have a, a reason like, oh, I feel better now or, oh, I'm just going to go do this and I'm going to do that. And then, you know, 10 days later, I'd be like back in the same boat of just being absolutely fucking miserable. And then I was yeah. like, it took me a month and a half of doing this before I was like, oh my God, like, this is addiction. Like, this is this, like, this is absolutely 100% like the cycle. And that's when I like kind of got scared. And then, so by the time, the reason I made this decision is by the time... I was able to just say, fuck it, lock yourself in your room, do whatever you have to do, no drinking, no smoking, no drugs, nothing. You're just moving forward with this. And so by the time I had 30 days, I was like, wow. And and even today, it's like, I'm, I'm not like denying that it would be really easy for me to like just get back into like having a drink here and there. Or whatever, but you feel but terrible about it. I mean, you, plus because you have all this, you have all this time built up. Well, a couple things. Like, I feel like I'm so terrible. Second of all, I feel like that would be amplified when I when I got drunk. I feel like I would kind of go a little bit insane, like just having that switch in my mind. And then right. I also feel like it would be the point of no return. Like, I well, also the buzz is the buzz is killed. I mean, it's a buzz kill when you get drunk and you haven't been drunk for a really long time. I mean, I remember getting out of getting out of j- prison, you know, for four months in Arizona State Prison. And the first thing I want to do is get a six pack, you know. But, and I did, 
and it was the worst six pack I ever. I mean, I just drank, you know I drank it, and it was like the buzz wasn't even worth it. You know, it was like it wasn't worth all the you know, four months that I spent sober. You know what I'm saying? It yep. was just, and then also the fact that I was on probation, and I shouldn't have been doing it. I mean, there was a lot of. Yeah, you know, but I had to do it because you know that was like the whole time you're locked up, you're going. Well, I can't wait till I get out of here and to get me a six pack. I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking twelve steps to the bar stool. That's what I'm doing. Twelve steps to the bar stool. You know, I mean that's and the thing about addiction, you know, it's like people like get a really a, this is like a really loaded word. You know, addiction is a, you know the definition of addiction is anything that has an adverse effect if you stop doing it. So. Uh. I, so breathing comes to mind, you know, because breathing is going to have the worst adverse effect if we stop doing it. So we're all addicted <laughs> right. to we're all there are, are things that we're addicted to that are good, you know, food, air, water, you know, yeah. just, and you have to do it all the time, you know. And nobody says, "Well, you're an air addict. You, you're breathing all the time. You know, you're you're doing it too much. You know, you just got to stop for a while because you're an addict." You know, you'd say you. You know, so if you're taking something that makes you feel better all the time because it makes you feel better and you don't feel good without it, it that's not necessarily a bad thing. I did a sobriety calculator as soon as I stopped drinking, and I put in like I put in the amount I was spending like on alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, and bar food. Absolutely. Um, and then I put in like the time that I spent at the bar, the time I spent like just waiting around for people to bring me stuff, and the time like <laughs> waiting for people to get ready. And <laughs> and it was like over forty hours a week. <laughs> Artie Lang had Artie Lang has the greatest line, and it's like, it's like the best part of being a coke addict is going to get it. <laughs> That's the best time, right? Because you have the anticipation, and you're on your way to get it, and you're you know it's you know what I'm saying. It's like that is the happiest you are. You know, you start doing it, you just want to do more and more, <laughs> and, then, and then you start coming down off it, and you feel like shit. And well, you I worry about your heart. It's an addiction to like the adrenaline, and I like I feel like I find it. In other ways now too, it's, it's, there's other things that, like procrastination is a big one for me. Like if I have something that I've promised someone else, I get this rush from like stressing about not having it done. You know, instead of spending that time doing it, I right. consciously like know in my head that I should be working on this presentation or this website or whatever it is that I've promised someone because I make those promises to hold myself accountable, right? It's like part of being sober is that I realized like throughout my life there's just like all these unfinished project, projects and right, so I was right. able to hone in on that is like a way for me to just cultivate everything that I'm lacking and so and there's a long list of these things that I that I practice and so one of them is like following through but I still managed to get that hit that adrenaline from like let's say I'm supposed to like show a client a website at like 8am mm. and it's like 11pm yeah. and I've done nothing I would rather sit for an hour and like freak out about it than log into my computer. It's the weirdest thing, and so I'm getting better about that. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a yeah, that's a self sabot sort of self saboteur kind of thing. Yeah, it's self sabotage. But then there's also this cool thing about like, let's say that I do that and then I get into it, and then the next morning I'm showing them the website, but there's a lot that's not done yet. It's like I'm excited about it, and as long as I'm honest about like not spending the time on it that I should have and kind of cramming but there's all these other things I want to do and mm -hmm. there's all these ideas that came up in the meantime like people are pretty sensitive to like that path you know people are pretty open to like okay cool and half the time they're like oh yeah that's like that's way more than we expected you know in the first place so it like sort of balances out but I, I do know that I look for that like I look for something and so I'm trying to like I'm trying to let it just let that part die um, yeah. There's also a very real brain chemistry thing going on. Like the first year that I was sober, I I had two pretty major episodes where like my brain just did not feel like my own for like a solid three days. I mean, I felt I felt crazier than I've ever felt in my life, which is saying a lot. Like I've, <laughs> I've gone through some pretty crazy reality. Yeah. So, when like, I came off the Abilify, I was up for three weeks straight. That was the weirdest. That was the hardest drug I ever got off of. I mean, yeah, including like, including like, fentanyl yeah. and all the opiates and all that stuff, oxycon. That's hard on the body, but yeah. Abilify is a brain drug, and you're not supposed to go off it ever because there's no cure for you know schizophrenia yeah. and stuff. So yeah, it was uh, it was the hardest thing I ever did. Yeah. Yeah, it was bizarre, but it was also like it was just so. 
it was such an amazing process to be present to because if ever I was going to just like jump back on board and make an excuse for myself to go grab a pack of cigarettes and some whiskey probably, you know, it would have been that. And it, I didn't, I wrote it out and it was hellacious. And I think that's another reason too that I just won't drink again because it's like I've gone through the hell of, yeah. of getting rid of it. And right, right. That it's we also use it. like moving back to LA, even though I feel like I've, I do feel like I belong in Southern California, but I do feel like I moved out of LA for very solid reasons that coincide with like who I am. And there's a part of me that feels like there's nowhere now that I've up here and it's just so spacious and like dense forest and there's like so much room to walk and breathe. I don't know if I can ever live anywhere else again, <laughs> but I do, I miss, like, the vibe. There's no place like Los Angeles, like... Well, it's, I mean... Oh, yeah, because I moved here, you know, so it's like, I, you know, I'm from the Bay Area originally, and then I lived in Arizona, and, right. uh, you know, I lived in Nevada for a year, but uh, L.A. is like... Uh, See, I came here because I thought it would be it would be good for me creatively, creatively, because I mean right. this is a, this is a place where you know the big creative projects are made and everybody's. But I found that the, most of the people here are like so obsessed with their own projects or their own reality that they don't. There are just more mouths than ears here. Yeah, and yeah. that's not a, that's a physical impossibility. I know, but it's true. You know, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. Everybody has this project they want you to know about, and I'm an, I'm a good listener, I, and I like I enjoy other people's work, so it doesn't really affect me that way on the on the uh, you know the input side. But right. when I try to share my own work with other people, it really is like uh, you know I don't feel like I'm a, I'm a, you know it's, I have to remind myself it's not a crime to share music. You know, it's not a crime. You know, it's like I'm not doing anything negative by by putting this in their mailbox or whatever. You know, because I may not ever hear from them, or I might hear from them again, and they say they never got to it or they didn't have time for it. I mean, that's the, that's the funny thing. You know, you don't have three minutes for a song. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, I I get it, man. You don't have to tell me twice. You know, it's like I I sent it to the wrong person. You know, I mean, and it happens a lot. You know, and and, and I'm a guy that. You know, I mean, I, maybe because I was rejected at birth, you know, I mean, I was adopted, I was, you know, I mean, I was reject, rejection is a very you know, powerful, it's the most powerful thing that I have to deal with in life. And I deal with it when you get to a different level, you know, and you have your Jimmy right. Kimmels and all that, you know, that everybody kind of supports each other once you become, you know, accepted and, uh, you know, established. But there isn't, it, people are just crawling, like you said, you know, there's like, to be heard, you have to like, wait three hours, you know, at the open mic, and you have, you know, I mean, just to play one song, which is why online is so much better, because, you know, I mean, I would reach maybe 25 people playing live, you know, a night, or 100 at the most, and, you know, online, I mean, I'll reach that in, you know, two hours, you know, so, and the other thing about it, but I'm getting rejected, you know, I mean, I had a guy kick me off his songwriter's workshop site the other day, you know, and it was just weird, because, I mean, it was one of those things where I should have gone with my gut feeling, you know, because, he, uh, I was posting like a song every week, maybe up there, you know, and, and, and he has to, he's an administrator and he okays it. A lot of these sites, like my open mic page, you can just post, you know, anything goes, but he has like all these stipulations, you know? So anyway, so I post like one a week up there and I'm getting maybe one or two likes up from his page, you know, no interaction at all. And so he writes to me underneath one of my songs. He says, uh, you know, I really like this song, you know, but I think you need to interact more with the people on this site. You know, you're not, you know, following the rules. So I removed myself from the site as soon as I saw that, right? Because I figured, you know, here I am spending hours and years and stuff creating songs to share with people in a songwriter's workshop environment, which is what the name of the site is. You think it'd be safe? But no, that's not enough. You know, he wants more, you know. And talking about songwriting is kind of like eating about jogging. It makes no sense, right? So... <laughs> And so anyway, so I so so he thinks that I'm a big shot guy from from L.A. Right? So he, he so when I when I removed myself, I thought that would be the end of it, but no, he messages me, begging me to come back to the site. He was so sorry, and he thinks that I'm just like, 
the guy that runs the site, you know. And so he says that he's sorry, he's 73 years old, he, sometimes he gets in his own way. And I feel bad for the guy, and I say, you know, look, you know, I'm not really a, you know, a successful singer-songwriter. I go, I've made, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be able to do other people's songs in clubs and stuff, and that's, you know, I've been successful doing that. But my music hasn't really, you know, done anything. You know, I've been written, written hundreds of songs, and, you know, a couple of them have been on TV shows and stuff, but I mean, for the most part, nothing, right? So anyway, after I tell him all that, I guess he couldn't go back on his word, right? <laughs> so, because he found out that I'm not really a big shot, he doesn't want me on his site anymore. You know, I, this is what I think. But, so then I post what he, so then I, he says, uh, why don't you post the, 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 I talked to him about Living Room, you know, the, the podcast I was doing, and I posted one with Magic Kramer, you know, the Magic Irvin, you know, the Magic, he, he was the guy that played guitar for Ray Charles and stuff. Right. And uh, I posted that on his site, and he loved it. You know, he said, but nobody else did. I mean, he didn't, he didn't get any likes or anything, you know. He didn't have that many people watch to go into his site. So anyway, and you wonder why. So anyway, so then he goes, well, you got to post some of your own songs, though, too. You know, you can't just post the podcast. So I wait a week, and I post one song, and he removes it, saying that I'm not following the rules. I'm not paying enough oh attention God. to the site. Yeah. And then he blocks me. So in other words, so this is so let me get this straight. He begged me to come back, so he kicked me off the site before I quit. You know, I quit. No, I couldn't just quit. I'm going to kick you out. You know what I'm saying? You, you wow. can't quit. I'm firing you. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I mean, of course it bothered me, and I was still, you know, and there's no way to talk to him because he blocked me. But uh, I, I, I want to talk more, but it's cutting in and out. Like I said, my battery's flashing. So okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna have to shower then. So um, yeah. Awesome, I can't wait to hear it. Okay, yeah, it was cool. All right. Okay, good talking to you. All right, bye. Bye.